Hi there. Welcome. Good to see you. I'm Jarrell. And today I wanted to share some cool stuff with you. Now, recently we have seen some things in the industry that are not great. I'm keeping a close eye on things. And I know that people out there would like to hear my thoughts and would like me to comment on certain subjects. For example, uh, the Stevie Chassard Ubisoft Monetization Manager, his comments and lashing out and attacking gamers. Um, we have the whole Godot community manager with um, that whole strange situation and Godot sort of doubling down and not uh, really apologizing and not doing anything about this community manager. You have Alyssa Mercante of Kotaku who has been lashing out and attacking um, Smash JT. So I actually don't want to talk about these subjects because they're boring. They're not interesting, they're boring. Uh, other YouTube channels have done an excellent job covering the situation. And I have a policy where I do not punch down on children, nor do I punch down on adult-aged people who lack the intellectual capacity to defend themselves, especially for people like Alyssa Mercante. I would feel very bad addressing that situation and discussing that creature. So these people exhibit having zero meaningful life experiences. These people are very loud online. They say that the sort of the, what is it, the empty vessel rings the loudest, something like that. The empty, empty vase rings the loudest, something to that effect. But these people have shown that they have no actual skills or wisdom, and they have absolutely nothing to contribute to society. These people waste their entire lives on Twitter. And it just makes me sad. Having to think about these people is a real bummer. And honestly... I'm going to be honest with you here. These people are very boring to me. They are not interesting in any way. They are such a drag. And I tend to spend my time doing things that I find interesting. I like to explore topics that I either have no knowledge of and I would like to learn about them, or I explore things that I just find interesting. So today I'm going to share some very rare instruments with you. These are instruments from my personal collection. These are antiques which I've purchased, I've found them and uh, won them through auctions, and I have restored them. So a couple of years ago, I taught myself how to restore antique instruments. There are so many interesting instruments that have sort of been lost to history, and I wanted to bring something interesting to my games in terms of music. So when it comes to video game music, often you'll find that it's it's the easiest way, it's the simplest way, it's the most modern way to just use synthesized instruments, but everything sounds the same. Everything has a homogenized uh, texture to it, and it's just very boring uh, from game to game, from composer to composer. If you only hear these synthesized instruments, it leads people to think the same way, and they have a very boring, homogenized way of thinking that is not unique or interesting, um, and it it just becomes... Um, just patterns of, of repeating itself over and over and over again in terms of uh, musical philosophy. So I try to find instruments, real instruments that I can play. They help me think differently as a composer. I look for antiques that I can uh, restore so I can think differently and also bring an interesting sound to my music. I'll put links in the description. Two of my soundtracks are online, which you can listen to for free. If you want to buy those soundtracks, you certainly may. So you can put the MP3s on your iRiver or your Zune, whatever MP3 player that you have. But I started out collecting and restoring these antique instruments, and I'll share the information about these with you. I have a couple to share with you. First, because I wanted to bring an interesting town to uh, an interesting sound to my Silver Falls games, and but after I started restoring them, I realized there was something much more interesting and important going on, and that it's important for me to preserve these instruments for future generations and to maintain the spirit of music, what is most important about it, and bring something special to, to other people. Now, it's kind of boring here, and the audio quality on my mic tends to. Um, cut sounds out. So we'll switch microphones and let's head over to the campsite. All right. This is called an ale zither or a variable zither. This one was patented and built around eight, uh, 1888, which is smack dab in the middle of the Wild West era. The Wild West era took place between 1865 and 1895. To give you some context, the Lewis and Clark expedition took place between 1804 and 1806 during the glorious era of American westward expansion. 
Now, I'll play a little bit of the instrument for you so you can have a listen to the sound. I personally found this so interesting because I've never heard anything that sounds quite like it. I have used this in my Silver Falls soundtracks, so you may not really, I, I hear it and identify it right away because it's not a sound that you necessarily would be familiar with, but uh, for those of you who have enjoyed my Silver Falls games on the 3DS and the Wii U, you have heard this instrument used in my soundtracks. Next I'll go ahead and show you my next rarest instrument. Now this one is quite interesting. This is called a table violin. So this is quite an interesting instrument. This one comes from uh, Germany, and it is circa 1850s to 1860s. It's extremely rare. So this is from around the Gold Rush era, and the U.S. Civil War took place between 1861 and 1865. So I'll show you a photo. This is an extremely rare photo that is able to find on the internet. This is a photo of a table violin in the USA circa 1898. So that is 100 years before Resident Evil 2 and Ocarina of Time. Now this one is quite an interesting instrument. You can either set it on the table and play with a bow or you set it on your lap. What's interesting about this is the frets allow you to play with precision in terms of your pitches. I'll go ahead and share a little video clip with you so you can hear the instrument being played with other instruments as well. Boy, howdy, that was pretty interesting, wasn't it? I've got one more really cool instrument to share with you. It's one that I'm still in the process of restoring. Now this one is quite rare indeed. This is referred to as a guitarophone, a specialized kind of zither that uses these hammers to strike strings. The strings are meant to be paired, mandolin style, and you hear a sound similar to this. Now, I'm still in the middle of restoring this. As you can see, it's missing a couple pieces. You might be able to tell. What is so interesting and unique about this particular guitar phone is that there are transverse strings that run along the top. These allow you to play chords. So you would use one hand to play the chords and the other hand to play your melody. This one I won't be able to play for you just yet, but I can share the insert with you. You could have a look at that. It's quite rare. I'm very proud to have this in my collection. Again, I'm still in the middle of restoring it. Now, if you would be interested in collecting your own rare antique instruments, especially zithers like these from the 1800s, I ask you to please be very careful in that if you do find these in auctions or you find them in shops around the place, antique shops, 
that these instruments are very fragile and they generally will not survive being tuned up with the original strings. The original strings are actually quite thick and higher tension. And if you were to put them at full tension, you will generally warp the instrument and cause it to fold up and that will destroy the instrument. So when I restore these, I replace the strings with modern lower tension strings. Now it's so important when you engage with any kind of career path, any hobby, any interest is you do your research, you learn absolutely as much as you can, and that you make sure that you do it correctly. Even if you are not an expert luthier or instrument repair person, such as myself, I'm not a professional, but it's something that I want to make sure that I do correctly and that I don't make mistakes to cause damage to the instruments. And it's important that, especially if you get into a career path, that you actually learn how to do your job correctly. You need to learn how the people before you did it, and you need to make sure that you meet the expectations and the standards of the industry in which you work. I take these kinds of skills very seriously because I could end up ruining this. I am aware that I'm bringing these instruments into the public light and I'm sharing it with other people in a public space and I need to make sure that I do it correctly or I could end up ruining that whole culture for other people. Now, these instruments, these rare zithers were actually purged from history uh, early in the 1900s. There are quite a few events in the world that were occurring. I don't really need to discuss those today, but these instruments, you can say that the history and the culture and these instruments were canceled. That's what we would say today. But in reality, the really correct term would be to say that they were purged. They were largely destroyed, all these instruments. There's very little information and written history and photographs regarding them. So it's difficult to come across that information. And it's important for us to recognize and understand that if you do not stand up and fight for what you believe in, people will come and take that away from you. What you believe in, what you care about, people will come and take it away from you. So you have to choose your battles. You have to protect what you care about. And you have to understand and recognize when people are coming to take something away that you care about. In this situation, unfortunately, these were taken away from us and they were erased from history. I'm doing my part to learn what I can and to restore these instruments. I am actually working on a documentary to, to explain the history of these instruments, to compose a full uh, soundtrack with these instruments. And I want to be able to at least at some, in some way restore these to uh, their place in history. Um, and it just makes me sad that unfortunately, people at the time were not able to fight and stand up for what they believed in, and they had something taken away from them. Maybe we need to consider what's happening in terms of our culture, and we do need to stand up and protect what we believe in. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at these instruments. I really enjoy sharing this stuff with you guys. And again, if you would like to hear some of my music, there are two soundtracks that you can listen to entirely for free. If you'd like to take a look at some of my games, I'll put the links in the description below. Thanks very much, everyone. If you would like to see more of these instruments, I'll share more videos in the future. And of course, I will be using these rare instruments in my game soundtracks as well. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you being here. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you around.